Greetings to all of you in the name of Jesus and welcome to Bible in a Year. We are now on day 356. I almost said 65. Lord, help me with this dyslexic moment right here. And what we've been doing is we've been reading through the Bible. We've been hustling for these last couple of days. Well, I have trying to catch up and get us caught up so that we can finish this year strong. Praise God. So we are reading through the Bible. We're in the book of Revelation right now. Very interesting book. If you have not yet read the book of Revelation, oh, you owe it to yourself to get into those pages and read what God is showing to his people. Now, if this is your first time joining us for Bible in a Year, I want to welcome you to Digital Disciple Ministries, and I want to see if I can get you to make a commitment to get into the Word of God. We have all endeavored to get into the Bible every single day and to spend intentional time in the Word, because that's what our relationship with God is built on. So, this video series has been a supplement to the reading Bible in a Year 2020. And that's a plan that we have on the YouVersion Bible app. However, the year is about to come to a close and I don't know if the plan will be available still on the YouVersion app. In the event that it is not, Never fear. For those of you that have wanted to go back to the beginning to do this series over again or to start the series from the beginning and work your way through, all of the videos will be posted on this channel, Digital Disciple Ministries. In addition to that, all the days along with the scriptures and readings for that day are posted in the description section for each video. So you have that there if you want to go through the Bible and uh, utilize these videos as a supplement. That's here for you. May the Lord bless you in your endeavor. And I pray that this will help you to strengthen your walk with God by developing the most basic discipline. And that is spending time with God. So let's do just that. Let's get into the Bible. I've got several verses here uh, from the reading for today, and I'd like to take us first to Proverbs chapter 31, and let's look at verses 6 and 7. And here is what the Bible says. Now, as is custom for me to do, I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible, but you all can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you are most comfortable with. I also want to add that I do use the Blue Letter Bible. It's a program called Blue Letter Bible to do deeper studies uh, within the Bible, looking up words in the Greek or the Hebrew. So if you are one that likes to study, that likes to dig, if you consider yourself a scholar, I, if you haven't already heard of the Blue Letter Bible, check it out. See if you like it. I use it here all the time, and it's been a blessing to all of us. Proverbs chapter 31, verse number 6. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of a of heavy hearts. Hmm. Verse seven: Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. I once uh, ministered to a certain homeless man, and. Uh, I was dealing with them, talking to them and stuff and, you know, trying to help them, be a friend to them, buy them stuff to eat and uh, whatnot. And he quoted this verse to me as to why he drinks. And he told me why he was homeless. He's homeless by choice. He was, he comes from a family of doctors or something like that. And he just decided, you know what, screw the system. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. I'm just going to be homeless and live as a bum. And that's what he did, and he was very happy doing so. And uh, this is the verse that he said, give strong drink to him that is ready to perish and wine to those that be of a heavy heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Now, I don't think 
that this is a license to get hammered. I don't think that this is an invitation to, hey, get smashed. It looks more like, and this is just my opinion, that if anyone should be drinking, then let people of a heavy heart drink. Now, I am not condoning alcohol. I'm not saying go out here and get hammered. I'm not saying if you lose your job or you have a bad day, it's a good excuse for you to drink. People abuse the Bible and they would say something like this. Rather, I think that I'm mentioning this so that I can say, no, don't drink. Because there are other verses in the Bible that strongly advise against that. Why then is this in the book? Why does the Bible say, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts? Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. What is the wisdom in that? Sure, maybe you'll forget for the moment, but you'll wake up in the same condition. You'll wake up in the same mess, in the same scenario. In fact, people that drink too much or that become drunkard, drunkards, they don't know how to cope with reality. I know, I used to drink like that. I used to drink a lot. I drank a lot of liquor, I drank a lot of beer, that's just how I rolled. And I did it to drown out my heavy heart. I did it to forget my misery. But the next day when I woke up, dehydrated, feeling a little sick and sideways, my problems were still there. In fact, a lot of times my problems were worse. Alcohol does, it, it, it could maybe cover some of your problems, but th there are times that when you're overdoing it, you create new problems. You start drinking with X amount of problems, and when you wake up the next day, you've got even more problems than you had before. And you know what? Who needs that? Especially in a year like 2020. <laughs> no, not me. Thank God that I've been delivered. But I did want to mention this just to say, I don't think that this is a license for you to go to the liquor store and celebrate when New Year's comes. Something to think about, something to pray about. Let's go to Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the, for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters." Did the Bible just say that there is an angel preaching the gospel? And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Now that's interesting. Do you remember Cornelius? Right, Acts chapter 10. He was the Gentile that Peter was sent to, to witness to, to preach the gospel. An angel appeared to him while he was fasting and told him that, hey, you need to go and get Peter. He's going to tell you what to do. Why didn't the angel preach the gospel to Cornelius? Because that has been given to men to do. Jesus left men in charge to communicate the gospel. If that's so, then why do we see an angel here? And it appears that the angel is preaching the gospel to those that dwell on the earth. Could this be a desperate attempt of God trying to get a hold of people 
trying to get them to turn, trying to get them to repent, trying to get them to bring their hearts back to him or to forsake their evil ways, that God would now employ angels to do that? We really don't know what the reasoning is behind it. All we're left with is speculation at this point. What do you think? Why is an angel preaching the gospel here? And why does the Bible say that the angel has the everlasting gospel? Will men listen to angels preach? If they won't listen to men preaching, perhaps they will listen to angelic beings preach the gospel. Something to think about. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I want to go to Ezra chapter 9 and verse 3. <coughs> and when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished. Interesting manners and customs that uh, the people of that time celebrated or rehearsed. This was something that a person did that was in great distress to tear the garments. You remember how Hulk Hogan, you remember Hulk Hogan? He used to rip his shirt. Just, ah, that's what I imagine they're doing here. He rent his garment and his mantle and plucked off the hair off his head. Now that I'm having a hard time imagining. I'm not sure that I would participate in that. I have other ways to express extreme grief. Aside from pulling out my hair and plucking the beard. Ah, can you imagine that? Uh, I, I, I can't. I just thought that that was interesting. And we've read that several times. People mourning, sitting in sackcloth and ashes and rending their uh, garments. And the beard was a very prized possession in that time. You remember <clears throat> King David? When he was pretending to be mad, he did so by drooling all over his beard. And that signified like, yo, you're drooling all over your beard. You Are you mad? The beard was prized. So can you imagine <clears throat> the level of grief, the extremity of sorrow that one must experience to pluck the pride from his face, his beard, his, his joy, his symbol of manhood. My man was really going through it. I wonder if there are customs today. I don't know of any people that may practice that, but to be honest with you, I have thought about using that myself, tearing my shirt uh, to show extreme grief. <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's something to it. It's in the Bible. I thought about it. it just indulge me. I, listen, am I the only one that thought about it? I can't be the only one that thought about sitting in sackcloth and ashes and repenting or throwing dust up in the air and sitting and mourning. Oh, come on, man. Let me know what you think. Let me know where you stand. Is there anybody with me or am I just a lonely nut out here thinking Bible wildly? <laughs> I hope not. Well, to God be the glory. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so, click that bell for notifications, make sure that you receive alerts every time that we upload videos, this way you won't miss anything that DDM is doing. Share this with your friends and with your family, you never know, <clears throat> this might be the video to bless them, this might be the one to get them the breakthrough that they need. May the grace of our Lord be with you all. Lord have mercy. Please have mercy on me. And if I done done somebody wrong, have mercy if you